In January 1945, the stage of World War II was turning decisive. As the Red Army relentlessly advanced on the Eastern Front, the North American forces pressed from the West, cornering Germany. In this context, Adolf Hitler, deeply isolated in a bunker in Berlin, faced the reality of his imminent defeat. Consumed by terror and paranoia, especially after the brutal fate of Mussolini at the hands of his own people, Hitler feared a similar end. His final days were marked by desperation and extreme fear, as he hid, hoping to avoid capture by the Allied forces at all costs. This part of the story not only reflects the collapse of a regime but also the dramatic end of one of the most infamous dictators in modern history. In the last days of World War II, the execution and subsequent desecration of Benito Mussolini's body had a profound impact on Adolf Hitler. Hearing this similar fate, Hitler was determined to prevent his body from falling into the hands of his enemies after his death. Taking refuge in his bunker in Berlin, he faced inevitable defeat with a mix of paranoia and desperation, seeking to control at least how he would be remembered after his end. Thus, besieged in a ruined Berlin, Adolf Hitler faced the reality of his inevitable defeat without seeking to escape, considering such a mission impossible. In a final act of desperation and symbolism, he chose to commit suicide alongside Eva Braun in his bunker. She died by poisoning and he by a gunshot to the head, thus marking the tragic end of the leader of the Third Reich. Both bodies were incinerated to prevent the Soviets from laying their hands on them, or at least that is what official sources claim. Today on Time Voyagers, we invite you to a retrospective journey to the last days of Adolf Hitler, one of the most infamous and bloodthirsty leaders in history. Prepare to explore the final moments that defined the collapse of a tyrant and the end of an era marked by terror. As 1945 began, World War II was nearing its end with the Allies advancing and the Axis on the verge of defeat. In this critical context, Adolf Hitler, faced with the imminent Allied conquest, was practically disarmed but determined to resist at any cost. Focused on avoiding defeat, the Nazi leader adopted extreme measures from his bunker in Berlin, a reflection of his desperation and delirium. Adolf Hitler ordered all German citizens between 15 and 70 years old to arm themselves to defend the nation. This extreme measure reflected his deep crisis and disconnection from reality as he faced imminent defeat. However, he faced internal opposition. Albert Espia, in charge of armament supply, argued that mobilizing the entire working population would paralyze industries vital to the war effort, such as railways and arms production. Despite his minister's advice, the Austrian leader ignored the warnings and continued with his isolationist policy, reflecting an increasing distance even from his own parents. On January 16, Adolf Hitler decided to isolate himself in his fear bunker, an underground structure beneath the Chancellery building, designed to be extremely secure against attacks. This bunker was equipped with more than 30 rooms, an advanced ventilation system, and thick concrete walls up to 4 meters thick, ensuring both camouflage and impenetrability. Initially, meetings with high command were held in the Chancellery, but the Nazi leader began to seclude himself more and more in his underground bunker. This structure became his final refuge, where his paranoia progressively increased as the German armed forces deteriorated. In his last days, Hitler's paranoia intensified, perceiving betrayals everywhere. This mental state deeply affected his relationships, becoming a significant obstacle for his closest officers. In a climate of increasing desperation, Hitler dismissed and arrested key figures within his own circle of power, including John de Jimla and Hermann Göring. The former was accused of treason for trying to negotiate peace with the Allies, while Göring was suspected of planning a coup. These actions highlighted the internal dissolution of the Nazi regime and the mental deterioration of its leader. Moreover, Hitler's paranoia reached its climax on April 27, when he demanded an SS officer mobilize 8,000 soldiers to break the Russian siege around Berlin, failing to recognize that the available forces were only 2,000 disorganized soldiers. Facing his subordinate's reality-based refusal, Hitler falsely accused him of lying, a clear indication of how his perception of reality was distorted. This episode is emblematic of the last days of the Nazi leader. Surrounded by real and imaginary enemies, unable to trust his most loyal officers, and losing touch with the devastating reality facing his regime. As the Allied forces encircled Berlin, the psychological impact of the imminent defeat deeply manifested among the German soldiers and officers. According to Antony Bivor in his essay, 
Berlin, the fall of 1945, many young soldiers, facing the certainty of death, resorted to drinking and reckless behaviors as an escape from the harsh reality. This desperation extended to Hitler's bunker, where alcohol and drunkenness were common among those close to the Fuhrer, using them as a means to evade the imminent capture and collapse of his regime. This period reflects the decomposition not only of a military force but also of the order and morale within the core of Nazi power. On April 29, 1945, in a somber act within the claustrophobic fear bunker, Adolf Hitler and Eva Braun married while Berlin was besieged by Allied forces. After the ceremony, the couple tried to sleep, well aware that their hours were numbered. This sleepless night reflected not only their personal union in desperate times but also the inevitable collapse of a regime in ruins. This episode marks the last private act of Hitler, underscoring the isolation and denial in the final moments of his leadership. Inspired by the tragic fate of Benito Mussolini, Adolf Hitler and his wife Giva Braun decided to commit suicide on April 30, 1945, to avoid being captured and publicly humiliated. In the Berlin bunker, after locking themselves in a room, Hitler shot himself, while Braun consumed cyanide. Following Hitler's instructions, their bodies were quickly cremated to prevent the Soviets from capturing them, marking a dramatic and definitive end for the leader of the Third Reich and his companion. The day after the suicides of Hitler and Braun, the Red Army took control of Berlin, but the rapid cremation of the bodies prevented conclusive evidence of the Fuhrer's death from being presented to the Soviet forces. Following the supposed death of Adolf Hitler in 1945, the veracity of the events was even questioned by Joseph Stalin and others, unleashing various theories about a possible escape by Hitler. One theory suggests that he fled to South America, specifically to Bariloque, Argentina, while another proposes that he took refuge in a secret base in Antarctica. Despite these speculations, studies conducted in 1968, 1972, and 2017 on the dentures found in the Chancellery support the official version of his suicide in Berlin. This mystery continues to fuel debate and fascination with the final fate of the Nazi leader. We invite you to dive into this tale full of intrigue and mystery, where history and legend inextricably intertwine. What do you think really happened to Adolf Hitler? In this episode of Historical Entry, we have explored one of the greatest mysteries of the 20th century, the final fate of Adolf Hitler. Did he really perish in his bunker in Berlin on April 30, 1945, or did he manage to execute a bold escape plan that remains a topic of debate and speculation to this day? Theories range from his suicide alongside Eva Braun to clandestine escapes to remote destinations like South America or even a secret base in Antarctica. As we close this chapter of our series, we invite you to immerse yourself in the discussion and share your opinions. What do you think about the circumstances surrounding the disappearance of one of the most infamous figures in history? Leave your comments below and join this historical debate. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to continue exploring the events that have shaped our world, and stay tuned for more in-depth investigations in our upcoming videos. Thank you for joining us on this journey of discovery, and see you next time.